Hey guys, it's Maddie from Let's Eat Plants, and today I'm gonna to show you one of my most favorite meals. I usually eat it at least once a week, if not multiple times a week. Super fast and super easy to make, and very, very healthy. So I don't think there's really an official name for this dish, but I like to call it a power bowl. It's basically a cross between a Buddha bowl and a big old salad, but really the best part of this dish is that you can customize it and make it with A, whatever you already have at home, and B, of course, whatever you like. So really it seems like the most basic concept to make this kind of bowl with all the things you have left over in the fridge, but there are a few tips and tricks that I've found to make it even more delicious, and that's what I wanna share with you guys today. So this is a really good meal to prepare in advance. Usually at the beginning of the week, I will chop up all my veggies and put them into Tupperware. And then when I wanna make a big bowl, I just take everything out and pack it into my bowl. Some components I will heat and some I will keep cold, but that is up to you. And I think it's really fun to customize your own bowl. If you have a big family, you can just lay everything out and people can kind of build their own bowls. And that way everybody gets something that they like and you did not have to put in any extra effort. So I'm gonna show you guys right now that my fridge is basically pretty empty. I do have a couple leftover vegetables from my last shopping haul and I do of course have some grains and beans in the cupboard so I will be adding those as well but the great part about this bowl is really that it can be made with such a small amount of ingredients for example it doesn't take one whole carrot to fill your bowl it's only gonna take a third or a half of a carrot so like I said it's really good to share with other people or at least just to prepare everything keep it in Tupperwares and then you can make this bowl a few times in a row and so with that let's get started so as you can see here is my fridge right now it's not too empty, but I haven't been shopping in a while, so it's definitely on the more empty side than usual. I do have some already cooked beans that we're going to use, some artichoke hearts, red onion, carrots and celery, cucumber. We got some spinach up here, some mung bean sprouts, a little bit of homemade seitan, some green olives, and let's do some pecans as well. So as you can see, this is not like that many different ingredients. Actually, that's a lie. <laughs> it's a lot of different ingredients, but I feel a lot of them are like condiment type ingredients that I always have in my fridge that don't really go bad. Things like olives, pecans, red onion stays fresh in the fridge for a really long time. Artichoke hearts, of course, were in the cupboard until I recently opened this can. Dried beans, I usually keep them in the cupboard and then I just make a fresh batch whenever I need. And then the seitan is homemade as well. It's made with vital wheat gluten, which I keep in the cupboard, so it can also be made fresh as needed. So basically the only fresh ingredients are the mung bean sprouts. Oh, even these, these came from <laughs> dried beans as well. So these can be grown at home at any time. So I would say that these go in the dry goods category as well. So basically, really the only fresh things are the spinach, the carrots, the celery, and the cucumbers, which I feel is not that much fresh stuff. Like I said, I haven't been to the grocery store in a very long time, and if I had been, I would probably have a lot more things to add to this bowl. Kale, lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, you get the idea. So usually I would have all of these things chopped and prepared at the beginning of the week, and then I just keep them in Tupperwares, like I said, and bring them out when I wanna make a bowl. You could also make your bowls in advance and then just put the whole thing in the microwave if you wanted it hot or eat it cold. And I usually add the dressing right before I'm going to eat it so the things don't get soggy. So that totally works too. It's whatever your preference is. If you like to make it fresh right when you eat it, or if you'd rather have the convenience of a grab and go, that's totally fine too. Okay, so the only other things that I am missing are I prepared some camu grain in the Instant Pot this morning. So this is also something I just keep in the cupboard. I have a few different kinds of grain and I will make a big batch and use it throughout the week. And then also some potatoes. I did have some potatoes to use up. So I just steamed those, very, very basic. I did not feel like roasting today. That's another item that's pretty shelf stable. If you buy potatoes, they do last a good bit of time. So first thing I'm gonna do is just grate some carrots, chop some celery, chop the cucumber, and the onion and artichoke hearts, and then we will assemble the bowls. So 
So this is my homemade seitan pepperoni. It's just made with vital wheat gluten, water, and some spices. And I really like the homemade one because you can control what's going into it. You can even add beans into it. I always make mine oil-free and sugar-free as well. But I know some people who are whole food plant-based don't like vital wheat gluten, which is totally fine. I really like it because of the protein content, but there are plenty of other protein sources, lentils, chickpeas, all the beans essentially, tempeh, a lot of grains have protein, nuts, seeds, etc. So it's not like there's a lack of protein in whole foods, but I do like the additional hit of protein that you get from seitan. In addition, I really like the taste and I don't think that it's that unhealthy. So I personally like to include it, but of course that is up to you. Include whatever you like in your bowl. That's the whole beauty of this meal. So as you can see, I have everything chopped and ready to go. Now this is like a lot of food. I can't eat all of this in one sitting. So this is already a perfect amount to kind of meal prep for future meals. This will probably make at least two, maybe three more bowls. Okay, so my next tip is to always use a bigger bowl than you think. This is true for salads, this is true for Buddha bowls, and that is because, well, at least me personally, I like to mix my bowl, and I feel that when it's like overflowing with ingredients, then it's really hard to mix everything together and hard for the dressing to get everywhere. So I like to use a really, really big bowl and then not fill it too full because obviously that would be too much to eat. But once you've made it a few times, you'll know what is the correct amount to fill it for you. So for today's power bowl, I'm using this very, very large clear glass bowl. And like I said, I'm gonna start with all the hot things first and just microwave it. You know, I used to really be afraid of microwaves. I did not grow up using a microwave. I almost never used one. It wasn't really until university that I was like, oh, people use microwaves? But you know what? Dr. Greger debunked the whole microwave thing and he says they're safe and I follow a lot of what he says. Of course, if you don't wanna use a microwave, you don't have to. You can heat all the hot things together in a little saucepan on the stove. That totally works or you can eat everything cold, that's fine too. So I'm starting with about a cup of cooked Kemu. I am really enjoying Kemu lately. It is nice and crunchy. I feel it's a really good replacement for brown rice, which Dr. Greger has also recently said, brown rice or oh, rice in general isn't that good for you because of the arsenic. So we've been trying a lot of other grains besides rice and Kemu is delicious. And then just some adzuki beans that I've also cooked in the Instant Pot. And so probably just about a half a cup of beans and then some potatoes and some seitan pepperoni. Okay, we're just gonna heat this up first and then add the rest of our toppings. So I'm gonna do a little bit of pecans. Of course, some carrot, celery, and cucumber. Red onion and artichoke heart. Our homegrown mung bean sprouts. A couple green olives. I love olives so much. And spinach. If I had regular salad greens, I would just throw those on top. But since I only have spinach and I've been eating a lot of it raw lately, I am just gonna wilt this really quickly on the stove top. It'll only take like a minute or so. So let me just do that and then I will put it on top of the bowl. And just like that, our spinach is ready so fast. And I love how much it shrinks down when you steam it. Now, arguably, the most important part of this bowl is the dressing. So I am going to share with you guys the one that I have been absolutely loving lately, but there are so many oil-free dressing options. Really, you can just let your imagination go wild with the dressing. It's kind of fun to do themed dressings if you're doing like a specific style of bowl. For example, if you were doing a Mexican-inspired bowl, you could do just salsa as dressing. You could do a chipotle dressing. You could do an avocado cilantro lime dressing. If you were doing an inspired bowl like a Japanese inspired bowl you could do like a sushi dressing that's what I like to do with some tamari and a little bit of wasabi and pickled ginger if you were doing a Vietnamese inspired bowl you could do a vegan fish sauce with like lime juice and maple syrup and chilies that one's really good you could always do the very simple and delicious 3-2-1 dressing which is three tablespoons vinegar two tablespoons mustard and one tablespoon of maple syrup. But actually one of my most favorite dressings is a very, very basic one that uses either tahini or cashew cream. I don't have any cashew cream right now, but that's also very easy to make. It's just blended cashews and water. But in a pinch, I like to use tahini and some kind of hot sauce. And essentially it's just these two ingredients mixed together with a bit of everything but the bagel seasoning or any other kind of garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, things that you like in your dressing. 
and that's it. Super easy to make and I think it's really, really delicious. I've been eating it like on all my bowls for the past two weeks. So this dressing is approximately three tablespoons tahini, or you could also use cashew cream, one tablespoon hot sauce, And then I like to add a whole tablespoon of this everything but the bagel seasoning. You could also add in some freshly minced garlic or any other kind of herbs and spices that you like. And then you just wanna taste it as you go and see if you need to add anything. Ooh, I think it tastes pretty good as is. You could also add like a splash of maple syrup or date paste if you did want some sweetness or like I said, any other kind of herbs and spices that you like. And then I just like to store it in a jar and then keep it in the fridge. You use it throughout the week as needed. If it does get kind of more of a solid state, you can add a little more hot water in there to thin it out and loosen it back up into a liquid. So like I mentioned, if I did have any fresh greens, those would be on the very top and then just mix everything in once you add the dressing, which we are going to do right now. And now if you are watching your fat intake and you're using a fat-based dressing such as tahini or cashew cream or avocado, then you do want to be careful about how much you use. Where something like the 3 2 one dressing you can probably be a little bit more liberal with. Now I know what you're thinking, that this is not looking like anything super beautiful, but honestly it is all about the taste with this bowl. You are going to have like such an explosion of different flavor combinations that with every single bite I'm like, oh this tastes tastes so, so good, especially because all the things that I've added into it are things that I really, really love. So it's just a perfect bowl of your personalized flavor combinations. And this is gonna be really, really good for lunch right now. Now, one word of caution I would say about your flavor combinations, of course, it is totally up to you. But me personally, I don't think that all flavors combine really well. So if you are very picky about your flavor combinations, then at the beginning, you might wanna start with like themed flavor combinations. As I mentioned before, you could do a Mexican inspired theme, you could do a Thai inspired theme, Greek inspired, etc., etc., until you kind of see which flavor combinations go well together, which ones you personally like, and then feel free to like play around and add in some more unusual ingredients to your bowls. So that's just my personal recommendation in terms of flavor profiles. I will leave some dressing ideas in the description box down below. Also, feel free to leave a comment with your favorite dressing. I do plan on doing a video with like maybe five oil-free dressings for you guys to try out. So let me know if you would be interested in seeing that. And I am gonna go eat this big, beautiful bowl of goodness. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like down below. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe. I'm making new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And with that, let's eat plants, and I will see you guys next time.